I used to fit into this suit about 50 pieces ago and now whew, I look like uh, two Dollar Tree Jason Statham's in one cheap suit. Welcome to the recession. My name is Antonio and I will be your server this evening. The recession is a brand new concept of steakhouse that I'm launching. Uh, the concept is simple. You don't go to a steakhouse at all because you're in a recession. And in order to have that authentic steakhouse experience at home, it's not necessarily about the steaks. It's about all of the things that come with the steaks, like the sides, the desserts, the sauces, Accoutrement. So this is part of a brand new series I'm starting called Steak Home where I teach you how to do just that. Today's episode I'm going to teach you how to make au gratin potatoes, creamy and delicious au gratin potatoes but with a twist. These have got jalapenos in them. I'm going to pair that with some grilled asparagus with a malte sauce. Malte sauce is a form of holiday sauce but instead of using lemon you use a blood orange. They're both really easy, really simple to execute and after you watch this video you'll be able to pat, do it yourself and you'll be able to have steak home in your own home. Rolling with the food. The potatoes grate 100 grams each of Jarlsberg, provolone picante, and mozzarella, low moisture mozzarella. The mozzarella is going to add some nice creaminess to it, and both the Jarlsberg and the provolone picante are going to add some piquancy to it, or you know, a little bit of tang. Thinly slice some jalapenos and thinly slice some garlic, and then put them aside in a ramekin or your container of choice till you're ready to saute them. A link in the description to my little mandolin will be there for you. You can use a knife, it's just going to be a little bit more time consuming. Slice as many potatoes as you can fit into whatever dish you're eventually going to put it in, but leave some room for the cream and other ingredients. Then on a medium heat, saute in a neutral oil the jalapenos and the garlic till they're slightly browned, which should only take about three or four minutes. Then add three bay leaves and saute them just for another minute or so. I used a total of 300 grams of heavy cream for this particular recipe and that was added to the sweated off jalapeno and garlic and now lower the heat to very low lowish low simmer to add the potatoes this is more about reducing the cream down to a consistency that we want rather than just we're not actually cooking the potatoes right now but it does help to get them going in a pan like that now it was roughly around this time where i realized that i didn't season any of this stuff which you should have done right after the potatoes went in there so i seasoned the layer that i did now which was a layer for the potatoes potatoes and some of the cheese with salt and pepper and then proceeded to salt and pepper the rest of the mixture. Then you just repeat steps one and two adding more layers of potato and more layers of cheese until you've reached the top of your dish and then you will add the rest of your grated cheese to the top of it. Clean up the dish so there's no sticky bits of cream all over the sides and finish with your top layer and stick in the oven. I started it on 400 but lowered it to 375 and I should have put it on a tray to begin with but I eventually moved it to a tray when I realized it would all bubble out all over the place. Every now and then just stick a little pair of knife in it and if you get any resistance at all you want to put it back in the oven for a little bit. That'll be in the oven for about 20-25 minutes and in that time you can make the asparagus. Uh, this isn't hollandaise sauce, I'm going to be making malte sauce and the difference is this little guy here. It's a blood orange. Now lemon goes really well with asparagus, that is true. However, blood orange goes even more well with asparagus. And I didn't have any white vinegar, so I actually used this for the first time. It's rice wine vinegar, and I ended up actually really liking it. This has got some sugar in it, so it added some sweetness to the whole sauce, which I thought went really well with the huevos uh, and the asparagus, in all honesty. All you need to make it is one of these I'm one of these. That's it. 
Here's a quick pro tip for you. If you hold the asparagus at both ends and then bend it, it will naturally break where the hardest part is and the good stuff is. Or you could just use a knife. Liberally salt a boiling pan of water and chuck those gusses in there. These are just going to blanch for a literal couple of minutes. See how I took it out? Give it a little snap. It was quite easy to snap, so that means it's going in there in the old colander and getting shocked with ice and cold water. This is going to bring it right down to complete cold so it doesn't keep cooking. Then melt 113 grams or a quarter of a pound of unsalted butter in a pan. Add a tablespoon of your vinegar of choice to a bowl. Some zest of one blood orange and the juice of half a blood orange. It's actually the blood orange that makes this sauce Maltese sauce instead of Hollandaise sauce. Now I'm not sure why this happened but my butter started to explode. Uh, I think it might have been a rind that jumped in there. Transfer the juice, the vinegar and the rinds to another container. Clean out a metal bowl then add one egg yolk. Whisk it up and then add a little dash of your juice mixture in there. This is going to help it to not split while we're emulsifying it which you do by slowly adding the butter to the egg yolk and juice mixture. Then over a very low heat whisk it for a few seconds. This is going to make the sauce start to thicken. You just keep repeating these steps, adding a little bit of butter and then whisking over the very low heat until you've achieved a consistency that you like. Usually like a thickish looking, almost mayonnaise texture is what you're going for. Don't worry about it looking a little bit too thick because we're going to add some more of the blood orange mixture to it to let it down in a little bit. But you can see here the texture that you want. And then after you've achieved that, it's a simple case of seasoning it with some cracked pepper and salt and then add a bit more of the uh, blood orange mixture to it. Mix it all up and then just leave it over on the top of your uh, oven to stay warm until you are ready to use it. Then on a really hot a griddle pan we're going to add our asparagus and grill them till we get some lovely marks on it just keep turning them intermittently this is all on very high heat after about 20-25 minutes those potatoes will be nice cheesy on top just going to finish them with some freshly cut parsley and then test the asparagus to be the doneness that I want it to be which is with a little bit of bite then it's just a case of playing it up put your asparagus in your dish ladle your sauce on top and uh, Robert is your father's brother. Two glorious steakhouse sides and the only thing you need now is a steak. Uh, what? What is that? What is this? Looks like a steak. Find out what it is. This is just for demonstration purposes obviously. I overcooked the steak. Ah, oh, it's like a medium. It's full of fat though, fucking hell. No, I mean like connective fat. Medium well. I fucked it up because I was doing all this other shenanigans, but it'll be alright. It's juicy. It is delicious. But this is the main event. This is what I wanted to make. Jalapeno or gratin. Better than Ocean Prime. You don't need to go to a steakhouse when you can have steak home. She's overdone. But still very edible. Thanks for watching this. See you next time. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. It really helps me out. But what helps me more than anything is you liking, commenting, and sharing this video. Thanks very much if you do. Let me know what you want to see in this series in the future. Peace.